that time of year again and it's another developer first. From the aptly named High Moon Studios, it's Dark Watch. High Moon Studios, who came out of Sammy Studios. Have I done anything by them? Uh, ah, yes, spy fiction. What are Sammy up to these days? Pachinko machines! Ah, oh, bloody course they are. But we're not here to play with our balls. You are a winner! <laughs> we're here to get our spooky on because it's October. Dark Watch is a mix of Wild West and vampire lore giving it a gothic, steampunk, old-timey industrial look. Fuck yeah. High Moon basically took Call of Juarez and Legacy of Kane and smushed them together, and I have no problem with that. Like Call of Juarez, Dark Watch is a first-person shooter. I'll admit I much prefer to play first-person shooters with a keyboard and mouse. I started off by trying Dark Watch on PCSX2. The keyboard part was easy, but I couldn't figure out how to control the camera with the mouse, if that's even possible. So I went back to the normal route and played it properly on a PS2, like a non-cheating conformist. eighteen seventy six, Arizona Territory. Outlaw Jericho Cross is boarding a Dark Watch train with the intent of robbing it. Hold it right there. Take it easy, partner. You got no clue what you're into. Jericho is interrupted by Cassidy Sharp, who tries to stop him, for there is no gold in that safe. Little does he know that the train is transporting Dark Watch enemy Lazarus Malkoff, a dangerous vampire. What have you done? Oh my god. Jericho is bitten and infected with the vampire's curse, and the release of Lazarus poisons the land, corrupting all around living and dead. Now Jericho is a vampire and will be doomed to become one permanently if he fails to track down and kill Lazarus. And as a vampire, he needs blood. Jericho has a standard health bar, but also a blood shield. This is topped up by collecting blood clouds from fallen enemies. And these enemies can be bastards. Reapers, gunslingers, banshees, and several more that will come at Jericho like moths to a flame. But it's the Wild West and that means guns. Jericho has a wide selection of weaponry. Revolvers, dual pistols, carbine shotguns and crossbows, to name a few. All with that same steampunk gothic aesthetic. Time to ruin some dead assholes' day. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. In the face. This is where Dark Watch shines. The gritty, visceral, satisfying combat. It's okay, Jericho's the good guy here. He's not killing you, he's just making you dead again. Nice shooting out, Law. Well, this train's fucked. We better get away from it from riding Jericho's trusty horse, Shadow who Lazarus has also cursed. Oh, great, thanks. Hey, you're right, horse riding stages. Undead riders will come out of the darkness. Taking them down isn't difficult as Shadow takes care of himself, leaving Jericho to concentrate on the shooting. No, oh, good, I didn't really want to grapple with the video game equivalent of patting your head and rubbing your belly. This is bad. Looks like Lazarus' minions got here before we did. Speaking of concurrency, Jericho will continue to receive advice from Cassidy and taunts from Lazarus via telepathy or something. I am finished with this victim. Do with it what you will. All the while Jericho is fending off nasties. Now use the ghost door. What? Can't hear you. Shooting. It'll take us right to the Dark Heart Citadel. Can't stop. We'll die otherwise. When he's not being rudely interrupted, Jericho needs to reach the Dark Watch Citadel to discuss how to deal with Lazarus. This means traversing through a variety of stereotypical Western environments, like tundra, mines, icy tundra, an outpost, and a deadly torture maze? This here is the Dark Watch training maze. 
Dark Watch Brigadier General Clay Cartwright is rightly pissed at Jericho for hijacking his train and releasing Lazarus, so to test his metal and a little payback, he puts Jericho through his little funhouse. The stereo sound in regards to enemy position is a little misleading. An enemy 20 feet away can sound the same as an enemy 5 feet away. This is quite disorientating, and it makes it sound like an enemy is right in your ear. It does have ProLogic 2 sound, but I don't have that option here at the PC. Maybe that helps with the spatial audio, but I don't know. Speaking of spatial, I couldn't help but notice this game has quite a narrow field of view. It may be because we're spoiled by widescreen these days, especially on some PC games where you can change the field of view, but Darkwash just looks a little closed in. I mean, look how much real estate the crossbow takes up. Great weapon, but I'd like to see where I'm going. Darkwatch includes a gaming trope that it does at least three times that I've never really been a fan of. Fend off waves of enemies to move on, or until a companion has unlocked a door or something. It's frustrating because you know if you die, you have to do it again from the start. Thankfully, there are checkpoints. Not all areas have to be cleared of enemies. Sometimes you can just bum rush it. Here, Jericho needs to shut down a reactor, which involves flipping two switches. Ah, screw you! Switch! Ah, fuck it off! Switch two, bye! And out of here. Don't forget who's in charge here. We're both after the same thing. Finally arriving at the Dark Watch Citadel, Jericho joins Hottie Number 2, Tala, and the rest of the Dark Watch in a few missions to rid several places of the cursed. You're just full of surprises, Jericho. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that. Pleased to meet you, Regulator Cross. Talking to the scientist, Jericho can choose to do three missions in any order. Well, la di da. What do you think this is? An RPG? A rescue mission? A turret mission? And yes, another hold them off mission. When rescuing the innocent, you are given the moral choice that every game and its dog is given: save them for a smaller reward or kill them for a larger reward. But the turret mission is important. It's called Deadlight Prison, and that's what we're after. It's an artifact that allows a vampire to exist out in sunlight. When getting to the church, it's too late. It's been gutted and everyone is dead. Cartwright is going to be pissed. Take it easy, cowboy. We're on the same side. Don't let Cartwright get you in the ladder. Tyler isn't pissed at Jericho, though. In fact... Uh, oh. Um... Well, there's your 15 rating. Jericho, wake up! Lazarus is attacking the Citadel! Tala must have opened the gates. But no! Betrayal! You idiot! Do you have any idea what you've done? This is her doing! Oh, shut up, Cassidy. Just because I didn't bang you. Lazarus has stormed the Dark Watch Citadel and wreaking further havoc. He was after the Deadlight Prism after all. Oh, should have seen that coming. All the Prism does is allow a vampire to walk in sunlight. Why is Lazarus all big now? Oh, well, you're still not immune to bullets, are you? Jericho. You were fun. Wait, it's not over? <gasps> oh, spoilers coming by the way. Skip here. <gasps> Double betrayal. Tala has taken the prison. Ah, shit. Didn't see that. No, wait. Not didn't. Ah, yes. Totally saw that coming. Like last night, giggity. After another ball busting gauntlet through another typical old timey town, Jericho has to shoot down the never stay still and never lands Tala. This is fun. This comes under the same umbrella as Painkiller or Bulletstorm. A mindless, blasty, shooty, well, blast. High Moon Studios combined the badassery of the Wild West and the gothic darkness of vampires and totally made it work. It has a few flaws like the POV, Jericho's way too floaty jump, and my personal gripe of the hold em off sections, but they don't really drag the game down. This was High Moon's first offering and they did good. It's a shame they later became a sub-developer, assisting with making Call of Duty and Destiny DLC. It would have been great to see a new IP from them once more. Oh!